Oh, okay, okay. Down to the wire. Xbox Series X or Xbox Series S? Which one do should everybody get? And see, that's a, that's a you got me in a tough spot there, Jacques. But I think I'm gonna have to go with the Series. Yo, 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 what's poppin'? Jacques Slade here, and we're back with a review of the Xbox Series X and the Series S. We are less than a week away from the launch of the next generation. Can you believe it's been seven years since the launch of the Xbox One? And now, it's time to finally say goodbye to your trusty Xbox One, or One S, or One X. Well, you get the idea, but is it really though? Does it actually make sense to box up your old console and buy the shiny new box right away? Or is there still some life left in them before you decide to jump into the next generation? Find out our thoughts and we'll answer some of your questions you guys had for me over on Twitter. So you heard us talk about our impressions of the Series X and do a full unboxing of the console in our last video. It's rather impressive that after years of looking at funky shaped monolithic boxes for our video game consoles, Microsoft managed to top them all with the Series X. Seriously, it's like an ominous building you would find in a movie about a post-apocalyptic future. And yet, if you didn't know it was an Xbox, you might think it was like a smart speaker that could give you the weather and the traffic on the 405. Yo, hey Series, what's the weather right now and the traffic on the 405? It is currently 75 degrees of kiss my I am a video game console, not your smart speaker. Wow. With 12 teraflops of GPU power, that's double of the Xbox One X, and it's on par with the most high-end PC graphics cards. Combine that with the console's velocity architecture that speeds up loading times by a huge margin, support for ray tracing, quick resume, and 120 frames per second gaming, the Series X is a hardware beast. In sneaker parlance, this is the signature shoe, the Air Jordan or the Nike LeBron of this generation. And if it's the signature shoe, that also means it's going to be priced like one. At $499, the Series X is quite the investment. Thankfully, it's the same investment that you made with the 2013 Xbox One, and we didn't get a price bump in the wrong direction, but $500 is still $500. Granted, there is Xbox All Access that allows people to sign up to get a console and pay it off in monthly installments, but at the end of the day though, you have to ask yourself whether you're ready to ante up again. And if the answer is maybe, well, Microsoft thought about that this time around. The Xbox Series X is the console made for the maybe crowd. Priced at $299 and shaped like something you would put on your bookshelf when you're doing Zoom meetings so everybody knows about that gamer life you're down with, it's the half-step console that we typically see in the middle of the cycle. Not at the beginning. Unlike the Xbox One X that dropped four years after the Xbox One though, this is a half-step down console. Going back to the sneaker analogy, if the Series X is the Air Jordan or the Nike LeBron, the Series S is the Team Jordan or the LeBron Soldier. But unlike in sneaker culture where hype beasts tend to look down on somebody who wears a Jordan Zoom 92 or a LeBron ambassador, the Series S is a viable alternative. And in some cases, it might even be the preferred alternative. Like I said, the tiny size makes the S an easier addition for your media cabinet and the fan that occupies half of the real estate gives it a distinct look. And at half the weight of the nearly 10 pound Series X, the Series S really is the perfect next gen console to take with you on the go. Yes, I said next gen because I wanted to get Get ahead of the Nintendo Switch fans. I know, I know. Okay, so this is the part of the video where I lift the Series S with ease and it becomes a gift for people to poke fun at. Whatever. Anyways, running at four teraflops, the Series S and the Series X power difference and raw numbers might be wide, but it's going to be up to each individual game developer to really show off that gap. While the Series X is capable of displaying visuals at 4K, the Series S maxes out at 1440p, although there are some 4K caveats to the S, which again, depends on the developers. At the same time, the Series S is also capable of ray tracing. It has the same velocity architecture for speedy load times, quick resume, and can support games up to 120 frames per second. The bottom line, pretty games for the Series S, but they'll look prettier on the Series X with the 4K TV. For most people, the difference between the X and the S will come down to the price and the lack of a disc slot and the smaller hard drive space on the S. The console also comes with the same number of USB 3.1 ports at three and HDMI 2.1 out and can handle internet speeds up to one gig per second. Huh, one gig speed internet. I wish I had that here. 
Packed with a mere 512 gigabytes of storage, there's really not that much room. And we know 512 gigabytes is not the actual number since you also have to account for system level stuff. If you download the Master Chief Collection to your Series S, that's almost 25% of your total space. Sure, there's the Seagate one terabyte expansion card, but with a $219 price tag, that negates the price between the S and the X. You could use a standard USB drive that you might already have laying around for your backwards compatible games, but your mileage may vary on how reliable those are and you can't use those for Series S or the Series X. That being said, if you're the type that tends to move from game to game and doesn't feel the need to go back to older titles, this might not be too much of an issue. And when you download a next-gen game for the Series S, it will not download 4K assets. For example, when you download Gears 5 for the Series S, you'll download the base game, but you won't download the nearly 60 gigs of ungraded visuals made for the Series X. So what happens when you turn on your fancy new box for the first time? It'll probably be a shocker because everything will look familiar. I mean, even the controller you'll have in your hand is going to be familiar right down to the shape. The Series S and Series X controllers feel like streamlined versions of the Xbox One controller, and that felt like a streamlined version of the Xbox 360 controller. But as a plus, you can still use your Xbox One controller for this new generation, so no need to buy that many new pads, at least at the jump. Now. Unless Microsoft is planning some sort of big surprise on the 10th, the home screen is exactly the same as it is from the previous generation. In fact, if you didn't know better, it would look like you were playing on the Xbox One. At the same time, you'll also notice something drastically different. The time it took for you to turn on the console and to mess around in the menus. It's fast. Like, you know how on the Xbox One X you have to watch that totally unnecessary yet totally abusing 4K video on the console's chipset every time you turn it on, and then you're just waiting for everything to load and take you to the home screen? Well, with the Series S and the X, you ain't got time for that. You power up the console, you get an Xbox logo, and a few seconds later, boom, you're at the home screen. It's night and day. It's like the sensation of getting a new phone after a few years. Yeah, the home screen looks exactly the same, but everything moves so much smoother and faster. You notice the time it takes your game library to populate is basically instant. Everything just moves at a quicker pace that I just can't help sing the praises of the Velocity architecture, which I still contend is the best name for hyping up how fast the console so perform since blast processing. We talk about the Xbox custom NVMe SSD that speeds up the performance of the console in the previous video, and that applies to both the Series X and the Series S. My only concern, if you're looking at the Series S as a console of choice, is whether the differences in GPU will become more of a factor as we move further along in the generation and developers start to look at the Series X as the baseline and the Series S as an afterthought. But right now, Everything moves swimmingly. Now, you've probably heard a bunch of buzzwords and catchphrases when describing what the big deal is with the new Xbox. Velocity architecture, which we've already covered, but then there's quick resume. It's the ability to seamlessly, for the most part, move from one game to the next. Now, personally, I'm a one game at a time person, and the idea of being so engrossed in one title and then all of a sudden shifting gears into a different game sounds a little crazy, but that's only because we've never had to really think about that in console games. To use the phone analogy again, think about the various apps that you might mess around with in the span of a few minutes. One second, you're checking your Twitter replies, and then next, you're responding to a text message. Then you go back to Twitter, but not before looking at Instagram first for a few minutes and then responding to a link that your buddy sent. Before you know it, it's an hour later and your timeline is right where you left it. Imagine playing the game of Gears Tactics and then getting a little bored with it and then switching over to Dirt 5. You can go back to Tactics, but you decide to play the Master Chief Collection first. And right as you're fighting the Flood, you have an aha moment for the Golf With Your Friends game you started a few days ago. Now, obviously, this won't work so hot for games that are persistently online like Fortnite or Call of Duty Warzone, but for single player experiences, this is great for the gamer who moves from one title to another. If anything, quick resume sometimes works too well. Like I've tried finishing up a game, saving it, and then turning the console off for the night. The next time I turned it on and played that game again, it goes right back to the save complete screen instead of the title screen like I never left. It's a neat feature that I think is going to get a lot of hype right now and good for that. But I personally don't see myself using it all that often if we're just gonna be totally honest.
Now, the funny thing is I like how we've gotten this far in the video and we haven't yet talked about in detail the biggest reason why gamers get new consoles, the graphics. So you might ask, but Jacques, how does the next gen look? Honestly, that's a tough question to ask right now because there are not that many examples to draw from. Yes, Microsoft is hyping this launch as their biggest ever because thousands of games will be available on day one. The catch is 99% of those games are backwards compatible titles from previous generations and were not designed for the Series X or Series S from the ground up. Halo Infinite was supposed to be that game, but it got pushed back to 2021 because of the difficulty of developing amidst a global pandemic. The closest thing we have to a next gen game at launch is Gears Tactics, a Windows game that was released earlier this year. Everything else that we've played is either a previous generation game that just loads way faster and thus is already infinitely better, or games that will use the Series X's smart delivery feature and download the game's 4K assets when they are available. For example, Forza Horizon 4 and Gears 5 look practically identical on the Xbox One X and the Series S to my untrained eye on the same television. But when you put those versions next to the Series X on a 4K TV, the differences are stunning. It's really just gross the more I think about it. My one nitpick so far with the graphical side of this new generation is that there will be more games like Dirt 5 that will ask you whether or not you want to play the game with prettier visuals or a faster frame rate. That's normally an option that we see in PC gaming, but to see that to become more commonplace in console gaming, it's a bit of a bummer. Like, I just want the game to run smoothly while also looking pretty. I don't wanna to have to worry about sacrificing one aspect for another. As I have mentioned previously, my gaming history is one that could be defined as casual. I played a ton of OG Halo in college, LAN parties for the win, but then when I got into the real world, I had to balance life, gaming, and career, and unboxing. I always keep up with the news, but I don't always dig into the minutia as much as I would want to because of other obligations. And that's why I turned to a friend of mine who used to do this for a living. So right now we're gonna talk to my buddy Juan and get his thoughts on the Series S and Series X because I lent him the consoles, well, both of them for a week just to get a feel for them and see what he thinks as we get closer to the launch. Yo. Yo. So, uh, so what'd you think? I seriously considered not calling you back or giving it back. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. Um, I was really like thinking about not really returning it to you. I respect it. So, <laughs> so uh, what games? What games stood out to you? Well, so we really got to try like next gen. Well, it's not really next gen, actually, if you really think about like the games that are available right now. Really, it's Gears Tactics. You know, it wasn't really like the mind blowing killer app that I thought we would get, you know, with like a with a launch console, right? Yeah. Like, you know, games like that. But there were other games. There was Dirt 5, which is, you know, your your racing game. And then there was Yakuza Like a Dragon. And I think I told you that, uh, yeah, I love that game. Like, what do you see for the future for Microsoft? Like, where do you see that going? I think a lot of it has to do with Game Pass. I think that is their big bet. That is their strategy moving forward for the Xbox Series X and the Xbox Series S. Game Pass is the thing for them. They are moving towards this, like, hey, you don't necessarily have to buy disc games, you know, 60, 70 bucks, whatever it is, you know, every few months. You know, we'll take your money. We'll take your 15 bucks, you know, every month. And, you know, you have like this huge library of games that's kind of basically it's their Netflix strategy where it's yeah. like, we'll take the drip. That brings to mind storage. If you have all of these games and you have access to all of these games, the S is only 512 gigabytes. And then even right. the, the, the X is only one terabyte. And right. we know how big games are now. Like you're going to fill yeah. that up pretty quickly. I, it's going to be tough. I mean, you know, that's the other thing too is like, it seems like it's not enough. I understand why. Microsoft wanted to price these consoles the way that they did, four ninety nine and two ninety nine. Those are like anything above that would just be a little egregious for like the consumer at this point because you know obviously with everything going on in the world, it's kind of like it, this is going to be the gamer who's going to use quick resume a lot, right? Like he's going to be like switching, he or she's going to be switching from like game to game. Are you going to be the type of gamer who's going to store a lot of games in your hard drive and just keep them there forever, or are you going to be the type of person who's going to download a game, plow through it? and then move on to the next thing. I think with the Series S, you kind of have to be the latter. So I, I asked Twitter some questions. Here's one from Emmanuel C. Uh, he wants to know, can you actually notice a difference in resolution and frames per second between the two systems? In terms of like resolution, yeah. I mean, if you're playing with the Series S, it's gonna max out at 1080p. If you're playing with the Series X, 
you know, it can go up to 4K. Uh, when I tried a game on the Series S and I tried to get the same game on the Series X, I didn't really see any noticeable difference in the frame rates so far. Uh, here's one. Uh, I didn't experience this when I was playing, but fan noise. This, this is from iHeart Sneakers. It says, fan noise, does it get loud? You know, when I was playing Gears 5, I think the loudest it was was in Gears 5, but it wasn't like noticeably loud. It didn't sound like a jet engine, but we'll see once, you know, games really start pushing that hardware to its limits and see how loud it can get. But for right now, no, there wasn't anything noticeably loud in terms of like the games that I played. So the moment of truth, right? Should you buy an Xbox Series S or Series X on November 10th, assuming you haven't already pre-ordered? Yes, if you can find one. But if you can't, I would not sweat it. You should not go out of your way to buy one of these new boxes right now. If you consider faster loading times a killer app, and honestly, it might be if you think about the time you're saving compared to previous gen, then okay, you should get one. But if you're holding out for that mind-blowing launch title, you're not wrong for waiting this one out. Now, if you can find one in the store that just restocked or you can get one through Amazon or Best Buy's product pages, great. Go buy it at retail and be happy. But for me, there is not a single game or feature that is worth paying double or triple the retail price like some opportunistic resellers are trying to get you to do. Maybe if Halo Infinite was available at launch, I might have a different opinion on this, but if you're not an FPS fan, then skipping the launch won't be the worst idea. Just be ready for the massive case of FOMO when some of your friends are enjoying their upgraded versions of Assassin's Creed Valhalla and NBA 2K21 in a few months. Just remember, Microsoft is playing the long game with the Series S and the Series X, and you should consider doing the same because the longer you wait, the better the Series S and the Series X and whatever they have coming down the pipeline is going to be. All right, so those are my thoughts on the new Xbox Series S and X. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. I'm Jacques Slade. As always, I appreciate you. Make sure you like, favorite, and subscribe and all of that good stuff, and I'll see you soon. Peace.